A very marvelous Monday to respected sir and all the participants. And our next session speaker is one and only our favorite teacher, Dr. Mahesh Sharma. <clears throat> Actually, Dr. Mahesh Sharma, he doesn't need any introduction as we all know that he is uh, doing so much thing selflessly for the students and for the development of this institute. But still, um, Dr. Mahesh Sharma, has, uh, he is from Rajasthan, uh, and he has done his MPhil in English in University of uh, Rajasthan, Jaipur, and PhD in English at English and Foreign Language University, Hyderabad. And currently, he is the assistant professor in English at Sun Central Institute of High Technology Studies, Sarnath Varanasi. And today, he, he will be speak on pandemic and philosophy. Uh, with, uh, uh, he will share his profound knowledge on pandemic and philosophy for all of us. And I would like to request your uh, sir to please bestow your profound knowledge for all of us. So, uh, sir, you have a uh, time of 50 minutes for your uh, speech and 20 minutes for question and answers. Uh, so if I'm not wrong, this is your second session of the day. And at the outset, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here because I was told that this is the senior students campaign and it gives me a special interest always talking to the senior students. And I'm also thankful to the 50th SWA Association who gave me this opportunity so that I could share some of the research work which I have been doing recently. So let me tell you very frankly, this is part of my two books which are due to be published next year. One is Tibetan Literature in English where I'm working on the uh, writers who are publishing in English, prison narratives in Tibetan literature in English. And second book is Pandemics and Philosophy. So when Sukhil had come to me and he told me that, sir, you need to talk on philosophy, I literally was, you know, kind of dubious in the selection of the topic which I had to talk about because uh, very soon, we are also going to launch a 10 days workshop of history of Western philosophy also. So I did not want to allow the cat come out of the bag and, uh, you know, in, talk to you about Western philosophy in journal as such, starting from a tradition which goes back down from Plato till the modern and now we call it not only postmodern, we call it post pandemic. So I decided then that it's better that whatever, though it's an initial phase, but I thought that it's better that I start to talk to you about some of the crucial ideas and aspects which inevitably has impacted our identity so much so that today either it is humanities, sciences, commerce, economics, the broad areas of hospitality or anything, we proudly say that we are living into the post-pandemic era. So I'm going to talk to you about pandemics, as you can see in the title, because I'm an English teacher, so I choose my singular plurals very carefully. I have not chosen pandemic. I have chosen pandemics, right? So please do not, uh, you know, get the sense that the uh, talk will only be uh, controlled and guided by the overall discourse of the recent pandemic, COVID-19. No. Uh, for your kind information, as I'm going to take you to a through, uh, tour of this epidemics and pandemics into the whole world, the recent pandemic COVID-19, which created so much of uproar, which created so much of, uh, um, let me say, fear, right? Fear of existence, which also created a kind of existential crisis, if I can quote Jean-Paul Sartre here. Actually, the recent pandemic was the safest one, right? So I'll talk to you about the data. I'll talk to you about how it happened across the globe. I'll talk to you about then why we all came to know suddenly about this COVID-19 so much. And we never knew that a uh, couple of years back, swine flu almost killed 50 million people across the globe during swine flu. Whereas if I give you the COVID data of 2022 today, recently, it has not even killed, though I'm not saying it out of the happiness that it has not killed. I'm just going to give you a kind of comparative data in your mind. It has not been even able to kill more than 6.5 million people. So you see, Spanish flu claims that it had taken the life almost from 20 to 50 million people, right? And because of the COVID-19, 
the world has lost the livelihood or uh, kind of, uh, if I use Agamben's word, the bare life, right? Only 6.5 million. But still, this recent pandemic created a kind of sensation across the globe, which was pretty obvious. The reason was that it was more than a natural geopolitical phenomena. It was all a setup. It was a capitalist venture to produce the fear on such a big mass level so that people started to do a lot of things which it never thought they would do. Right? So when we talk about capitalism, we talk about neoliberalism, I'll try to explain those terms in a while. Then you will understand that when you talk about this concept of vaccination, when you talk about how people suffer with diseases, it's all sometime a setup, which is not, of course, explicitly. Right? A country like US, America, which we consider as the big boss of the whole world, suddenly we saw the ugly face of America. A lot of people, let's say 30 to 40% of their people lost their lives in such a rich country. How was that possible? Was America not prepared? And when I compare the American government and the preparedness of a nation like America with a very teeny tiny nation like South Korea, right, which beautifully controlled the pandemic. So how is it possible that a civilization like, let's say, India, where uh, uh, where the pandemic started to have its hit in the form of waves. So we had the first wave, we have the second wave, and in third wave, when the fear recently again upsurged, but it did not hit India at all, right? So remember guys, when you talk about philosophy, in recent interpretation of philosophy, politics is an essential part of this. And let me quote before I start my lecture, one of my favorite philosophers of the recent time, Simon Critchley. Critchley says, politics without ethics is blind and ethics without politics is directionless. So exactly that's what had happened in the recent two to three years that if I give you a data, 30% of the world's money came into the hands of only four companies. Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, and the companies which were trying to make vaccines, so I don't want to explicitly charge some companies against them, but 30% of the richness, money, right, monetary repository, suddenly came into the hands of the four people, uh, four companies. And Amazon CEO promised that he is going to kind of invest 4 million rupees into the uh, uh, settling down the vaccination and anti-vaccination drives and well, if you think that it is an act of benevolence for the people and Amazon is doing a good job, we just wait up for a while and see first how actually the whole setup which was created in front of us, which looks like a tragedy and it happened accidentally and most of us seem to, you know, kind of charge uh, China for this that of course this uh, a virus suddenly came out of Wuhan and a uh, lot of writers, a lot of activists in Wuhan also have written about that. If some of you want to read, there is a very beautiful autobiography written as the Wuhan Diary, where on the risk of the life, one writer, very, you know, I don't want to pronounce the name, I'm not good at pronouncing Chinese name. So the book's name is the Wuhan Diary, where the writer has, in a very strategic way, you know, started to reveal the layers of the layers of the secrets of the world which was happening there, right? So anyways, let me come back. A, please drop this idea that the recent pandemic is the most dangerous pandemic and we have survived it. So it's an amazing thing. It is just the beginning of something very, very vicious, right? I don't know how many of you know, just 20 days back, Moderna, which made the vaccine, in America, the first vaccine, right? Of course, uh, uh, when uh, the countries were into the race of making the vaccination, I'm sure some of you know that vaccine takes minimum 10 years, right? Now, how come we suddenly made the vaccine within a year or two years? Well, some of the conspiracy theories said that they were already working on this. They already had six to seven years data. And when they knew that we are almost ready they unleashed a virus in the whole world, right? So that is one theory. As I'm saying, it's a conspiracy theory, so I'm not sure how much, because uh, we don't have a kind of, uh, you know, research to uh, support that, right? Uh, 
clearly. But yeah, there are conspiracy theories which talk about this. Recently, why? Why now I am talking about this so openly is because recently Moderna lost a case in the US. And the case was that the vaccination company had to tell the world how many side effects of the vaccine which Moderna vaccine would be giving to the human beings and they had to submit a list of 150 side effects of the vaccine which they never revealed. They said it's safe but now we know that it's not safe. And if I tell you one of the very obvious uh, side effect which people are facing in my own friend circle, I have lost 50 to 60 friends of mine, of my age. And how did they die? They died while dancing into Garba. They died while dancing into the parties. And they all were healthy of my age. But they all had only one similarity among all of them. They all were doubly vaccinated. And few of them had got for a booster shot also. Am I telling you that you should not take vaccine? No. No, please don't misinterpret what I'm going to tell you. But I'm going to support a thesis of mine with a Western philosophical domain where right from 1980s, some European philosophers like Ulrich Back had already talked about the concept which is known as risk society. He published a very beautiful book. And if some of you get a hang of Western philosophy, this is something I'll highly you know, recommend for all of you, you should read. So when Ulrich back in 1980s was talking about the risk society, he said that we human beings today are living into the risk society. Is it that previously people did not have risk? What about the brutal wars which sometimes took place for 10 to 20 years? Then how come our recent world is different from that? That's exactly what I'm going to tell you now. Earlier, the risks were mostly nature created. Right? Or let's say the crazy uh, wish of domination of certain, you know, people to colonize another country. It happened. But the recent risks are made by us. You know, so uh, as I always tell, just to think about a very common risk we 24 hours are surrounded by is the kind of mobiles which we carry in our pockets and when you sleep in a hostel. You are surrounded by the invisible red waves. Just imagine if your mobile, of course you know that it is right now connected with a tower. And I'm sure all of you have heard that people should not buy their houses very close when there is a mobile tower. Right? That means, okay, you should not buy it very close because it will directly hit you. That does not mean that right now it's not hitting us. Right now, just imagine if you have seen those Mission Impossible kind of movies, a red crisscross of almost 200 to 300 mobile rays, which are piercing through our body. And when they do, what do they do? If you have any small disease, it will accelerate it. So if you could die or let's say that disease will come to fruition after let's say 10 or 20 years, because of this radiation of our laptops, of our mobiles, look at that, I am, uh, you know, holding a mic which is wireless so close to my mouth and you are capable to hear it out. I have another gadget in my hand which is again wireless. So and I'll put it, you'll see this red, you know, dot. That's exactly the risk society he was talking about. Right? So we'll talk about some of the philosophical ideas and let's then try to see if we can make some sense of a political capitalist move which had put a big pandemic like this in front of all of us maybe as a kind of setup right so let's try to understand slowly and slowly when i'll put it you'll try to understand how did it happen and i have collected a lot of data as i told you it's part of the book so it's deeply research based when i'm telling you i'm telling you the numbers i'll tell you the references when i quote i'll tell you what are the books i'll give you the exact numbers so that you'll start to get a kind of sensibility where i'm leading you right so when we talk about pandemics and philosophy the most important idea if we start to ask ourselves is what do you think how now the world is going to end we all know that once there were dinosaurs and suddenly all the dinosaurs disappeared is it that human beings are also moving towards that and there is going to be a nuclear war let's say you know there is a fortune teller who has told that after april yeah, eight years back, he said, after April, Russia is going to drop the nuclear bomb on uh, Ukraine, right? Almost uh, when the war started, 
before eight months before that he said the war would take place it is taking place he said it will not wrap up so easily it is continuing and now i'm waiting for april because he said that by april there is going to be and this is not that there is this one kind of interpretation of the facts like this if we go by the political and international relations also things are also moving towards that right so what do you think how our world is going to end it's not going to be a any dangerous bomb it's not going to be anything else it's just going to be look at the color which i have changed i'll just read the last line for you statistically speaking our modern world won't end with a bang or any geographical collapse it is just going to end with a very small thing which we call sneeze we sneeze every day but just go back take a time travel and go back a year or two years back how afraid we were of a sneeze when people used to sneeze around us hai na cheekne ka bhi there were rules how should you sneeze how many times you should wash your hands right though there was no data as such that if you will wash your hands if you will wear the mask you will not get covid i am not saying these were not effective tools remember that i am not saying that at all i am not dismissing the power of vaccine i am not doing at all thank god that we got very hurriedly some kind of vaccines which of course it started to give a kind of herd immunity to a lot of people and the outcome is pretty clear that whatever is still in europe and america a lot of people are dying when i'm talking to you but it did not impact india so badly as it did it in the second wave this is covid 2019 we are going to encounter in our own generation a lot of covid so of let's say 2025 26 28 32 so be prepared for that it's not going anywhere if we think that we are vaccinated and we just got rid of that and thank god that we survived well survivor in post pandemic era is not going to be so easy right and i'll tell you why not when we talk about corona vaccination covid and all in philosophy it's known as an event known as black swan event usually how did this term came it's very interesting usually swans hunts jise bolte hai na they are white in color so usually we say that swans are white until some people saw a black swan also so they said oh my god swans are black also so after 30 40 years we came to know that oh there are black swans also and by the way there are you know in australia you'll find them pretty easily so it is known as a black swan event why because this is the term used by epidemiologists right so we will use a little bit of uh, medical vocabulary here epidemiologists to describe unusual occurrences that have a huge impact and recently no other event had such a huge impact as corona did and we all know that right then is it that i'm just out of the blue talking about philosophy and pandemics like some of my students they were asking me in classes sir pandemics and philosophy why don't you give a lecture on western philosophy what pandemic or philosophy has to do with each other so let me just for a research let, let me tell you in the last two years more than 130 books explicitly came out with the titles like look at that the first book and i'll i'll if some of you are pretty interested you must go through some of these books slavoj zizek is a great post modern philosopher and when the pandemic just had hit he came out with a book and this is part 2 of his book so look at the title panic right like point 2 so he 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 kind of called it panic 2 chronicles of a time lost slavoj zizek he is a great philosopher right we teach in my post modern class look at the next book then we have touch in the time of corona look at the subtitle reflections on love care and vulnerability in the pandemic right touch and not to touch people also became a topic of philosophical discussion right then came a very important book by one of the finest philosopher sociologist gerard delanti and the title of the book was pandemics politics and society which of course talks about the philosophy in pandemics then came uh corona virus psychoanalysis and philosophy if some of you want to read one book that sir forget about so many books can you tell us one book this is a book guys this is a book of the interview of more than 23 
contemporary philosophers including agamben including uh, bodhu right the great philosophers have given their interview in this how pandemic and philosophy is going to change the way we talk about our existence in the modern life and then came the face mask in the covid times and agamben he himself is a great writer the founding father who gave us the concept of the bare life right i'll talk about that in a while where are we now the epidemic as politics right and these are the initial books which came out in 2020 december 2021 i'm not talking about the latest one that is on the next slide then came an all too human virus by the french great french theorist philosopher jacques luc nancy who is a kind of student of jack derrida so when you talk about a philosophical tradition look at a philosophical tradition we have into the form of the recent books right then came recently few books one is the great sociologist unfortunately passed away 3 months back bruno latour and i always say latour's concepts in the western philosophy have he is the kind of philosopher who talks about the object theory so he says even this has an existence and he kind of gave birth to how objects which are surrounding us can also be a proper object of philosophizing right so he kind of created philosophy for that and then we have political philosophy in a pandemic these are the recent books and indian iit professors one of the award winning book by divya divedi a very good friend of mine published a book virality of evil philosophy in the times of a pandemic just recently got published 3 uh, or 4 months back right now you can see that the tradition which i'm going to talk to you already is laid down there are criticism there are philosophical ideas there are political ponderings there are economical implications so it is a widely well settled discourse it's not just out of the blue i'm going to talk to you about something so what i'm going to do basically is based on my own research my own understanding i'm going to give you a gist and the quintessential summary of all these books critical ideas right so when we talk about the recent pandemic is it that the pandemic recent pandemic it just new and so sudden that the world was not prepared for that no that is not the case right as i told you right from 1980s onwards a great european philosopher albert back was already talking about the upcoming onset of such kind of dangerous events and he gave the concept of the risk society we all are living into the risk right let me try to define his concept of risk society because it's very very important How does he define this? He says the risk society is defined not just by the distribution of goods, money, wealth, economy. No, but more so by the distribution of bads, pollution, contamination, pathogens. So virus is a kind of pathogen, right? So I'll be using this word a lot. So pathogen is something which gives us any kind of disease, right? So they are small viruses which you cannot even see with your naked eye. right so pathogens and other by products of production so he was already kind of around 1980s onwards yelling and telling the whole world that be prepared something very vicious something very dangerous is going to unleash very soon and alric back is still writing his recent books on pandemics are absolutely thrilling and he was absolutely right when he was talking about a kind of risk society we all are inevitably unknowingly going to be part of because of neoliberal capitalistic society i'll give you a data then i'll talk about that so these are some of the concepts of his global risk society this is his new book so he started with risk society and then he came into the concept of global risk society why did he add up the word global before risk society because remember guys 50 to 60 years back you could still think that you live in one part of the world today if you say that i live in one part of the world you are wrong today you live in the world right now what i am saying am i just playing with the words no right when my forefathers wanted to go to let's say hyderabad from varanasi it would take 3 to 4 days travel for him now within 2 hours you can reach hyderabad and in the same day i can go to hyderabad or london and come back also right today if you want to order something there is amazon you just click you pay and just think about this just think about this how powerful the uh, govern mentality i'm going to use fuko's concept later on look at the power of amazon in the whole world 
Amazon is the only database across the globe where 90% of the people have their mobile number registered. They also know where do you live. They also know how much money you have because you often place your orders there. They know your names. They know everything across the globe. And I hope you know that there is, in India we use Amazon.in like that. There is Amazon.au in Australia, for England, E in. Amazon is across the globe. If today I want to order a book from London, it will just take me six days time. I can click it, I buy the book and the, buy, the book will reach at my home. But you know what is happening behind it? What is happening is pretty dangerous. Earlier, Google was kind of criticized for this. When you drop a mail to somebody, right? And whatever you have written in that mail, and if you delete it and you are happy, or if you delete a message on WhatsApp and you think that, ha, ah, nobody saw what I read or what I have written, what I dropped, you are absolutely wrong. We are living into the era of surveillance, right? Somebody knows everything, right? Your mails are never deleted. When you give your address on Amazon, Amazon earns hell lot of money by selling that data to a lot of, you know, beneficiaries. I don't want to charge Amazon of that or explicitly like that, but there are again conspiracy theories like that, right? Remember guys, conspiracy theories, if you know about WikiLeaks, what happened in the US, right? When, and of course the person was charged who kind of leaked all the official data, very secret data of America and it created a kind of uproar. I'm talking about the same kind of conspiracy theory. So number one, the world is different now, right? I'll uh, give you, you know, this will be very interesting for all of you if you will just, okay, let's let us talk about some of the, with ears. Right? If you think that this recent pandemic, because uh, because of the WhatsApp, because of the fear, because of the media, because of the political leaders, because of the lockdown, and because we are now so interconnected that the whole world it seemed to you know play the thalis and L at the same time, so we knew that this is happening. It always was there. So let me give you some data in the form of timeline. In 1918 to 1919, one of the biggest tragedy unleashed in Spain, known as Spanish influenza. This is the event which caused 50 million lives of the people. And I'll give you that data also. Then we have HIV, which is still going on. And there was a time when in Africa, every second person was suffering with HIV. And this is happening right now also in Africa, right? Then we have SARS. S-A-R-S, -S, right? It was again a kind of influenza. So remember, everything is related with what you are breathing in, what you inhale, and what you exhale in the form of a sneeze. Then you give it to others also. Then we have swine flu in 2009 to 10. Then we have Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, known as MERS, which took place in 2012. And then we had in 2014 and 16, I'm sure most of you were in this university that time, right? We all are here. 2014 to 16, Ebola. We all heard the name, but it did not impact us because we did not bother. But when COVID came, the world was already different. When the COVID came, the Amazon industry, where you could easily ask from one country to another, today, it is so cheap to travel from one country to another that even the common workers who earlier could not afford it, they are traveling from one country to another. So when you travel, you carry pathogens. When you travel, right now I'm in Sarnath, there is a dust and a lot of pathogens on my body right now. You cannot see it. But when I travel to Delhi or when I go to China or when I go to Korea, Korean people will not be accustomed to what I'm carrying with me. My body may be immune to that, but their body will not be. That's why in ICU in the hospitals, we'll never allow even the sleepers to get into. Doctors change their clothes and overcoats and all. If you ever wondered why, there is a very basic principle. Because people, those who are in ICU, their immunity is very low. The word immunity became very popular during COVID. I don't have to define it to you. So the theory is basically same. It has always been same. Right? So then came Zika virus in 2015 and 17. And all of you will be saying, we never heard these names. Right? Let me give you a data how many lives it cost. Now this is a scientific data got published in a book. Let's go with the first one, 1918 to 1919, Spanish flu, 20 to 50 million deaths. 
right now let me give you you know usually when i teach in class and i say 10 million 10 million people say oh 10 million right now let me quantify it for you the population of varanasi is 1.6 million when i say 20 million 15 times all of us in varanasi died 15 times so imagine the kind of you know impact of this kind of when i say 20 millions it may not impact you that much right the population of up is 20 millions 20 crores right so asian uh, sorry uh, population of up is 200 crores 20 crores when i say right so asian influenza 2 million uh, hong kong influenza 1 million then look at hiv it's right now also continuing hiv cause 37 million lives but do we hear so much about this? We just teach about HIV to the people and we all have this concept and oh my God, when people have insecure sex and all that, people get HIV. It's not so easy. It's not as innocent as it appears. Go to America, Africa and see how societies are suffering with this. This is also one of the biggest threats in front of the people. But because companies are not going to earn a lot from this, because it's not going to, you know, create a kind of sensation, nobody bothers about this. But wherever there is a star, people are still dying. And look at the number, 37 million. Look at the next one, avian SARS. Oh, this is not million, okay? Only 774, only. Then we had pandemic influenza, which you call swine flu, right? So in swine flu, 1,52,000. MERS, Middle East, it was controlled very easily, 858, right? And then we have Ebola. Then we have Zika virus and it was not fatal at all. And then came COVID-19, coronavirus. So you remember when you call it COVID-19 and coronavirus, the viruses were already there. We have a whole history of virus. And this is the data till 2021. Look at that, 29 December 2021, 5.4 million people died. Add one more billion till today, 6.4 million people have died across the globe because of COVID. Now compare this data with this data. I'm not saying even a single death. We are not celebrating this, by the way. I'm just giving you some statistical data so that first we get our facts correct, right? And we don't fall prey to a kind of rumor which tells us, and so far as the fatality rate is concerned, you'll be shocked to see. Look at that. When Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome came in 2012, the fatality rate, fatality rate kya hoti hai? Agar aapko koi rog hua, to kitne pratisha chance hai ki aap mar jayenge? Right? Covid mein sirf 2% chances the. Wo bhi ab ho gaya. Pehle to 0.2 tha. And we were so scared. Aadhe se jyada log to dar ke karan mar gaye. Ulrich Beck talked about risk society. He said that people will be so scared kyunki aapka immunity or aapki dhadkan and all that, you know, started to behave very, you know, kind of funny. So look at that, 40% mortality rate of 2012 versus 2% mortality rate in 2019. Again, I'm not saying it's good that, oh, it's only 2%. But you will have to first see the data to see the difference between some, you know, statistics data. Anyways, then why there is so much of fuss about COVID-19? If it's not such a big deal, as I'm trying to tell you, why we are creating so much of fuss? Well, it is a fuss which is created by governments or is it a fuss by, uh, it actually got created a kind of havoc because A, it came from China where diplomacy was working in such a way that they never allowed the data to release from their country. So there was a mysticism associated with that, right? People even did not know. Will, when, I, I hope you know a little bit of history of this, when COVID was starting to spread, people first thought that it is only impacting those people who came in direct contact with animals. It is not spreading between human to human. So we are safe because I did not eat anything and I did not go to that market in Wuhan. So that's okay. But within two days, right, this myth, the bubble was burst and we all came to know that it is not only spreading from one human to another, but some of the mutation is so powerful that from one person, it can spread to 26 to 30 people at a time. So when I'm breathing in this room and let's say, if I have something, you'll automatically get it. There are some conspiracy theory which says that it is airborne, but governments did not want to create panic. So they said, 
think about the Indian condition in the second wave. My whole family, we were 11 in the family. Everybody got COVID. So when I talked to doctor, he is a very close friend of mine. He's, he told me, he, his words were, Eko vana, ye prashad sabko milega. And I said, no, we are taking precautions. I'm wearing mask. I'm washing my hands 10, 20 times. I had bloody cuts on my hands, washing my hands so many times. He said, kuch bhi kar lo. Right? And then I wanted to see it. We all got, you know, isolated. Everybody in home. I Luckily, we had a very big house, so we could easily adjust it. Still, day after day, day after day, day after day, everybody including a three years age of child to my dad who is 70 almost, everybody fell in, right? Now, I'm not talking about the data based on some, I'm telling you my personal experience. My mother is suffering with dialysis, uh, kidney failure, so she's on dialysis. When your kidneys fail, it means you are in the worst condition. We have to take her thrice to hospital for dialysis, which is a very painful experience. Why I'm telling you this is because the theory and the doctor said that if someone's immunity is so low and he or she suffers with COVID, they will die in a day or two days. And because I was reading so much and you know, young generation, I was so worried for my mom. I literally was crying every day as if I was counting the hours. Oh my God, it's going to happen. And my mom was full bindas. My mom said, don't worry, nothing will happen to me. Don't worry, nothing will happen to me. I used to wake up 10 times at night to just to go and see is she breathing or not. Right? The first person who recovered from COVID was my mom. Right? So when the willpower of human being, I'm, I mean, see, I'm just sharing my personal experience. Don't take it as a medical fact. Right? I'm not telling you all of you should be careless and roam around without mask and all that. Don't misinterpret my uh, detail which I'm going to give you here. Right? I'm just going to tell you, never panic in your life. Panic itself is stress or panic, whatever. Doctor says, no stress. Mat lo. The moment you panic and you have stress, stress and panic is such a powerful thing on your body in the civilization and it was in the air everywhere. That if you can survive something for 30 days, for one month, you will automatically drop it down to a few hours. Right? So anyways, let me give you some data to tell you what we learned from previous pandemics and what we should have been aware of and what South Korea did which America could not do and what China did in the first wave which India could not do and what India did in the after second wave which China could not do, that's why it's suffering. And why even in a powerful country like America, the old people, you know, there was this list. Okay, you already lived your life, you die. Let me. So there was selection of the bodies, the young I had to save, the old because there were no proper ventilators, there were no proper machines. So I thought, okay, so we were selecting who will live and who will die. It was according to age. It was according to how many diseases you have already. Right, when I took, to my, I took my mom to Ames, the biggest hospital, they said, hey, you know, let's not waste our medicine on a useless body. And trust me, my mom did not take a lot of medicine because a kidney patient cannot. And she recovered. But when I heard this language, I first time, I used to read it in philosophy, you know, I was a big fan of Agamben, Foucault, so I knew this vocabulary. But when it hit me directly, I said, oh my God, the doctor is saying useless body. Are we talking about human body, human beings as bodies now? But this is how we counted everything in Corona, right? So let me give you a data of some of the pandemics which happened before this. That's why I use the term in plurality. Remember guys, there are two types of pathogens in the world which affect us. The one is any kind of virus. By the way, when you get normal cold also in winter, it's also because of a virus. It's also a pathogen. Pathogen is pathos and a kind of genesis which lives in your body. Thode din ke liye andar rehta hai, fir we take antibiotics and all. Now let me tell you what is the dangerous thing we are doing. What happened in COVID? In COVID, people started to take antibiotics. Do you know what does antibiotic do? Antibiotic is a kind of drug. When you take it, your body that time, right? can fight against that virus, but then if I give you second time that antibiotic, your body will not react. Because you have actually antibiotics kabhi bhi young age mein kisi ko nahi diye jate. 
एंटीबायोटिक देना शुरू होते हैं सिक्सटी ईयर्स के बाद से अब आप में से जितने भी कोविड के समय में एंटीबायोटिक खाए हैं ये समझ लेना कि थोड़ी उम्र के बाद में अगर किसी को खांसी भी आई ना तो तुम्हारे लिए कोई दवाई नहीं बची दुनिया में क्योंकि आपने अपनी बॉडी को एंटीबायोटिक लेके ऑलरेडी खत्म हो गया आपका अब मतलब आपकी बॉडी ने पहचान लिया कि अच्छा ये वाली एंटी इसीलिए अगर आपने नोटिस किया ना हर बार डॉक्टर बदल बदल के एंटीबायोटिक लिखते हैं एंड दे टेल यू पूरा कोर्स लेना ही लेना है बिकॉज इट कैन वर्क अगेंस्ट यू so look at the second one i am changing the color there i want all of you to watch very carefully right the second threat is antibiotic resistance bacteria the covid which came into the second wave actually became more mutated and powerful kyunki humne first wave mein itni antibiotic kha li ke wo mutated ho gaya wo change ho gaya aur wo ab aapki body pe aasani se attack karta tha koi dawai kaam nahi kar rahi thi Why? Because we we ate, we popped up. लोगों के घर में ऐसे किट पड़े रहते थे राइट डोलो खा लो ये खा लो सब डॉक्टर बन गए थे वी डिड नॉट रियलाइज हाउ बैक्टीरिया एंड पैथोज वर्क तो सबसे खतरनाक चीज ये हुई दैकेंड थ्रेट एंटीबायोटिक रेजिस्टेंट बैक्टीरिया नाउ इन फ्यूचर विल हर्ट ऑल ऑफ अस ये कोविड तो चला जाएगा मान लीजिए बट अब एक छोटा सा भी बैक्टीरिया आया जो अगर पहले आता अर्लियर इट हैड हैपन वी कुड इजीली कंट्रोल इट विथ एंटीबैक्टीरियल बट नाउ वी हैव इटन अप सो मेनी एंटीबैक्टीरियल आवर सेल्स राइट दैट नाउ अ स्मॉल बैक्टीरिया विल आल्सो अनलीश समथिंग मोर डेंजरस देन वीशियस देन द प्रेजेंट कोविड नाइनटीन द अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग वॉज एंटीबायोटिक म्यूटेटेड मॉन्स्टर वॉट हैपन्स इज देखो बड़ी सिंपल सी बात है यू डोंट लिव इन द वर्ल्ड अलोन यू आर अ ह्यूमन बींग यू थिंक यू आर द बॉस ऑफ द वर्ल्ड बैक्टीरिया इज ऑल्सो लिव एंड दे ऑल्सो हैव टू सर्वाइव है ना उनको भी तो अपना खाना खाना है और ये करना है तो जब आप मिट्टी में कुछ करते हैं देर आर थाउजेंड बैक्टीरिया विच गो ऑन योर हैंड राइट नाउ देर आर बैक्टीरिया ऑन माई हैंड यू कैन नॉट सी दिस दे आर सर्वाइविंग देर दे विल सर्वाइव सो इफ आई ईट विदाउट वॉशिंग माई हैंड दे गो इन साइड माई बॉडी there are some harmful some harmless and something which my body can already tolerate control because i'm young so it will not impact me right but when i have a soap which can kill one kind of bacteria bacteria are also very smart what do they do they mutate they change their so how do they mutate they have a tail they have one ear they have one eye they have two you know whatever they mutate they change their shape covid has been changing its shape very fast do you know why because it impacted across the globe so the genes of chinese are different from genes of indians the food habits of italians were different from hamara khana hai na hum log haldi khate hain mirch khate hain dhaniya khate hain all that we use so it impacted different countries in different way and it was the same virus it learned ki oh italians pizza khate hain isliye aise ho jao britishers aisa khate hain aise ho jao pathogens are very smart they have their own life cycle hai na to survive kar gaye abhi bhi survive kar gaye had the vaccination could not come at proper time and we could not vaccinate a big chunk of kya hota hai na ye apne aap kaise mar jate hain jaise all of us are vaccinated in this room let's say once then even the mutated one it will die within this room it will not travel with me and these days we are so rich people with tongue and cheek you know kind of uh, pun intended with this that we travel from one country to another very easily and they travel with us right now let me give you a data this is very interesting data in the past century both human and animal populations have exploded in 1900 there were less than 2 billion people now there are nearly 8 billion people in 1960 there were an estimated 3 billion chickens now the number is 20 billion so when we are also increasing with such a huge number nobody expected virus is also increasing with that to aap bolo sir chicken bataya thoda virus ka bhi batao well we cannot see them with naked eye it's not easy to count them but remember they are increasing whenever a new baby is born there will be couple of viruses which will be stick to the body right why this covid recent covid created so much of problem because now you don't live in india now you don't live in china now you don't live in america you live in the world so remember my words we are living in an interconnected globe 
Now let me give you a data. Can you even imagine how many people take flights every day? Look at that. 8 million people take flights every day. That means every day, one person is moving from one country to another, carrying the bacteria and viruses which are okay in my country. But when I enter in another country, maybe the people there, maybe the kids there, maybe the old people there are not immune to that because they are taking different antibacteria and I was taking different antibacterial. You got the point? So this was one reason. Now I'm, I'm also supporting my thesis with a data. Let me give you a data. This, this one, this is very interesting, right? This, I'll read it, listen very carefully what happened for the SARS. We can see this, this data in 2003 outbreak of SARS. When the initial victims in Guangzhou arrived in a hospital, that person reached in a hospital, doctors were unsure of the cause, but they came in contact with that person. The physician in charge traveled to Hong Kong where he checked into a hotel and infected 12 more people. Gonzao se wo kaan chala gaya? Hong Kong. Usi din mein. Thik hai? 12 more people, including a flight attendant. Aur usne wo virus kisko de diya tha? Flight attendant ko. Thik hai? To uske touch mein kitne log aate hain? So look at that, how it works. The flight attendant then traveled to Singapore before falling ill and checking herself into a hospital. Her physician was due to fly to New York but he only made it to Frankfurt before succumbing to the disease. He died on the way, but he was going to Germany. Other infected people traveled to Vietnam, Canada, and the United States. Within one day, SARS had spread to five continents. That is the difference. It never happened before our century. Right? So when you downloaded something or let's say you ordered something on Amazon and a delivery comes at your home, let's say from Bombay. Then remember guys, on that pocket, uh, on that packet which has come to you, there are the viruses and pathogens which are coming right from Bombay to you. And it is delivered so fast like a pizza. Right? And we are so happy, Are two din mein mera delivery a gaya. You don't know what else is coming with that. So this is a factual scientific data. I did not cook it up. Okay, I have taken it from the books. So you see what is happening in the world where we are living. People are traveling so much, right? And if somebody like a flight attendant gets it or a doctor gets it, says almost 30, 40 people of different nationalities get it and they go and give it to their countries. Interconnectivity, the travel, the cheap airfare, right? It was never so easy to travel. Now it is pretty dangerous because of that. The second thing is, we never take care of our waste management. Like I always ask when sometime the mass management society comes to meet us in IQAC, my first question is always this, what do you do with the waste food? I'm sure students leave a lot of food. We all grew up in hostels. What do you do with that, right? And you know, whatever we do, Look at that, wow, what waste management can do to you. Between 1959 and 2017, seven, almost 50 years, okay, the size of US hog farms, jahan pe sewer palte hai na, unko hog farms kehte hai, right? So farms where we have pigs basically, so you have pork out of it. Hog farms increased by 2000%. Main 2000, sewer ke ki baat nahi karao, 2000% bad gaye. 2%, 3%, 2,000% 2, in 50 years because people were eating. And chicken farms grew a staggering 30,000%. Again, please understand the data. I'm not talking about 30,000 chicken bad 30,000% chicken bad which is crazy. As you can imagine, the amount of waste produced on these farms also increased tremendously. This has resulted in manure pools where pathogens thrive, evolve and contaminate the air, soil and water on the farm. And even if you don't live nearby, you could still be exposed to the dangerous pathogens that form there, which through discarded water and manure can contaminate the produce that ends up at your local supermarket. 
All of you go to a supermarket. Now let me give you a data. ये कैसे हुआ? It happened with the German soldiers. Look at that. This is what happened in 2011 when thousands of German soldiers ate contaminate fenugreek. Fenugreek समझते हो ना? हिंदी में क्या बोलते हैं? धनिया टाइप. Fenugreek. आप एक लोकल मार्केट से तो नहीं खरीदते हैं हम जाते हैं बड़े बड़े मॉल में और वो कहां से पैक होके आई है आपको नहीं पता ठीक है ना जैसे मैं हमेशा कहता हूं ये जो पानी की बोतल आप कैरी करते हैं जो खरीदते हैं ना और आप बोलते हो सर क्या गवार वाली बात कर रहे हो तो बिस्लेरी है बट आपको पता है वो बिस्लेरी कितने दिनों कितने घंटे तक गुड़गांव के कोई भी एक जगह मैं नाम दे रहा हूं गुड़गांव के किसी एक हाउस में इट माइट है टेम्परेचर वॉज सिक्सटी डिग्री सेवेंटी डिग्री और फिर इमीडिएटली लाके उसको फ्रिज में रख दिया जाता है और हो सकता है फ्रिज में तीन महीने से पड़ी हो और आप वो खरीदते हैं दस रुपए में और आप जो प्लास्टिक उसमें घुल गया है विच इज कैंसरस हम बड़े प्राइड से उसको पी जाते हैं यू डोंट नो व्हाट यू आर ड्रिंकिंग राइट इट्स जस्ट दैट यू आर यंग सो राइट नाउ यू विल नॉट गेट हिट बाई इट राइट फेन्यूग्रीक स्प्राउट फ्रॉम इजिप्ट अब वो कहां से आया था इजिप्ट से वेर इन जर्मनी राइट And were afflicted with bloody diarrhea caused by a unique sugar toxin producing strain of the common but bacterium E. coli. Just to give you one data, same yehi ho raha hai. Jab aap pizza khate hain, hai na? Aur aapko lagta hai sir oven mein gaya hai, to sab garam hoke mar gaya hoga. Bilkul nahi hai. Pizza mein jo jo cheese dali gayi hai, uski ek shelf life hoti hai. Isliye to market mein buy one get one free kar dete hain na? Kyunki wo waste hai. उनको पता है कि कल ये एक्सपायर हो गया तो आई विल बी लूजिंग अ लॉट ऑफ मनी सो दे से बाय वन गेट वन फ्री एंड वी द मोमेंट वी नो बाय वन गेट वन फ्री हम तो जहर भी खरीद लेते हैं कि नहीं नहीं खरीद लेते हैं बाय वन गेट वन फ्री है काम आएगा एक्चुअली दैट्स एग्जैक्टली व्हाट वी आर ट्राइंग टू परचेज देन राइट सो एनीवेज लेट्स यू नो आई डोंट नो द प्रॉब्लम इज द टाइम सो लेट मी ना देन अनदर प्रॉब्लम इज आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू रीड नाउ एवरीथिंग अनदर इज द पॉपुलेटेड लैंड्स वी आर लिविंग close to each other now that it is very easy that if i sneeze right if you are let's say earlier we would not live so close to each other so the world has now been very very compact right objects are traveling people are traveling even aeroplanes are traveling from one place to another and they also carry the germs right okay there were other problems with the political deceit and hiding facts and china is the greatest example of that China did not share its data. Let me tell you, one of the things which I loved, which happened during COVID, was the art of research writing changed. What happened earlier? If you talk about research articles and all, research articles have to be minimum ten pages with lot of references. It changed in COVID. In COVID, snap writing came into existence. What is snap writing? If I am in my lab and I came to know, oh, this can work on COVID, I'll immediately put three lines on Twitter. and anybody in the world can learn from my twitter and can work so snap writing came that's why the vaccine could come into existence within a year thank god to technology thank god to doctors who were sharing it immediately throughout the night they were working just write three lines and share it you don't have to now write 10 pages of research so even the way the research is written changed drastically because of covid so the political deceit and all it'll take me a long if i take you to the political deceit you understand na dhoka dena i know what happened during um, american regime right some of the political leaders they were not ready ki isse kuch nahi hoga wo mask bhi nahi pehen rahe the i don't want to name a lot of leaders here and when they got covid you know then they realized oh my god it can really infect people and it is dangerous so they started to do something after that by that time right a good population good number of population in america who were old were already dead right so anyways yeah this is a very interesting concept now i'm going to pick up two philosophical concept by fuko i don't know how many of you know michel fuko but one philosopher who was read and reread and interpreted and reinterpreted after covid was michel fuko and all of you should read him he is one of the finest writers who can open up your brain to a almost a different kind of level which will not be even able to imagine he gave us a concept of governed mentality governments try to discipline the society right and we all say no no i am a very disciplined student when my prime minister is telling me ki kal thali bajana hai main bajaunga 
राइट माय प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज टेलिंग मी कि मास्क पहनना है मैं पहनूंगा माय प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज टेकिंग अ वैक्सीनेशन जैब आई शुड आल्सो टेक बाय द वे आई एम नॉट मेकिंग फन ऑफ दीज थिंग्स आई एम सेइंग हाउ डिसिप्लिन अ कल्चर एंड अ सोसाइटी कैन बी बिकॉज वी आर गवर्न वी हैव अ मेंटेलिटी विच इज गवर्न और ये कहां से पैदा होती है एग्जैक्ट स्कूल से है ना जब घंटी बजती है ग्यारह बजे बज गए क्लास में पहुंचना है आप कितने भी बिजी हो यू जस्ट रन एंड यू गो टू क्लास वॉट a totalitarian university is doing we are creating a governed mentality in you we are creating a mentality in you where we are telling you you should be governed by us right the second concept which huko gave is also pretty interesting it is the concept of biopolitics and biopower according to huko human beings and human bodies have a power That's why China used to feel so happy about its population क्योंकि हमारी दुनिया में सबसे ज्यादा population है When the COVID came, it became a burden on China. The same happened with India. जब ज्यादा लोग आपकी country में South Korea में क्यों ज्यादा नहीं हुआ या Japan में या यहां पर क्यों control हो पाया Because people were living very far away and at the same time the population was less and the government could control it. हमारे यहां तो पंद्रह दस बीस हजार लोगों पर एक पुलिस वाला खड़ा रहता था you know so how would you do that it's almost but the good thing is that time we learned the art of discipline human beings were very disciplined and we are disciplined only in the atmosphere of fear jab tak fail hone ka dar nahi ho hamare bacche padhte nahi hai hai na main hamesha kehta hu aap apni potentiality dekhiye exam ke just before one night you know you study for 8 to 10 hours with utmost concentration सोच के देखिए अगर एक साल तक आप ऐसा पढ़ लो तो आप कहां से कहां पहुंच जाओगे वो भी आपकी फुल पोटेंशियलिटी नहीं है बट एग्जाम खत्म होते ही द फियर इज गॉन वाई शुड आई राइट एंड लाइफ गोज ऑन लाइक दिस 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 सो फॉल्स यू नो आई आई वांट टू स्किप सम ऑफ़ द कॉन्सेप्ट बिकॉज़ हार्डली हैव मिनट्स लेट द एरा इन नाउ फिलोसॉफर द एरा ऑफ एंथ्रोपोसिन What is anthropocene? मैं आपको एक फोटो दिखाता हूं सो दैट यू विल लुक एट दिस फोटो दिस इज एग्जैक्टली वॉट इज एंथ्रोपोसिन ह्यूमन बींग्स हैव ईटन अप फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ आवर मदर अर्थ अब आप लोग क्या सर पिज्जा है कैसे खा गए वी आर यूटिलाइजिंग द रिसोर्सेज वी आर एक्सप्लोइटिंग एट एट सच ए फास्ट लेवल देखिए सोच के देखिए पहले एक मजदूर को एक खड्डा खोदने में दो दिन लगते थे है ना अब आपके पास ऐसी मशीन आ गई है आप 10 किलोमीटर तक खड्डा खोद देते हो एक दिन में यू नो टेक्नोलॉजी हैज काइंड ऑफ क्रिएटेड अ काइंड ऑफ हैवक इन द होल वर्ल्ड राइट और हमें लगता है हम डेवलप्ड हो रहे हैं हम इसको और ज्यादा खाते 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 लुक एट दैट व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन इन द वर्ल्ड सो वी हैव रीच अप टू अ लेवल जो डायनासॉर्स के साथ हुआ था मैं ये नहीं कह रहा हूं कि एक दो दिन कुछ हजार सालों में हमारे साथ भी होने वाला है right so that's what we are leading so anthropocene itself is one lecture where i can talk to you almost about one an hour it's an interesting topic to talk about i'm going to talk about take a little bit time and introduce you to a concept of post humanism this is a very very relevant concept and i'm very helpful you know thankful that during my phd years i came across a philosopher like dona haraway right so the concept is pretty clear All of you today, do you think you are human beings? I'll say, क्या बात कर रहे हो सर? What do you mean by we are not human beings? हम क्या राक्षस हैं और ऐसे हैं? How can you talk to us like this? But my concept is, you are not only human beings. Your identity today is associated with your mobile. Your identity today is associated with your Twitter account, with your WhatsApp DP, right? Technology has mingled with human beings so much so. that you will look like this this is what you are this is the picture which dona harave chose when she published it to empower a woman earlier if i would let's say somebody beat a woman a woman will cry somewhere in the corner of the world but that is not the case right now a woman can immediately by the way you cannot see she is typing she is typing a letter on internet right so look at the confidence in her eyes look at the technology around and look at a kind of animalistic hood which shows power they have been empowered today if your hand gets cut you get a prosthetic if you don't have a leg you have a prosthetic leg 
right? And I tell you, what is the latest scientific research which is taking place in the uh, world? They are saying that now when the baby will be born, the DNA sequencing of that baby will be downloaded. Or if someone will die, then there is no problem. Take a dead body in the right time, then you will go back to your DNA and you will come back to life. It may sound like a science fiction story to you right now. Just wait for a couple of years. Things are changing very fast. Within few years, there is going to be a technology. A chip will be installed in your body, under your skin. If you have BP, it will tell you. If you have sugar, it comes to Apple's watch. Apple watch works on the same way. Nobody thought that Apple watch will be capable to tell you your heart rate, your BP, your sugar. आपको पता है ना ऑक्सीजन कितना लेवल था ये कितने सारे गैजेट्स बिके दुनिया के अंदर ड्यूरिंग कोरोना राइट सो थिंग्स आर चेंजिंग मेडिकली वेरी फास्ट व्हिच इज नॉन एज पोस्ट ह्यूमनिज्म वी आर नो लॉन्गर ह्यूमन बीइंग नाउ वी हैव एंटर्ड इनटू द एरा ऑफ पोस्ट ह्यूमन कैन एनी वन ऑफ यू थिंक अबाउट योर सेल्फ टूडे विदाउट इंटरनेट एंड विदाउट मोबाइल्स यू कैन लिव विदाउट योर रूममेट यू कैन लिव विदाउट योर पेरेंट्स बट यू नीड योर मोबाइल you need your laptop. You need internet. If we don't get it, we feel like something like that. Yes, sir. I'm very sad. I don't know why. The reason is because you are not connected now to the a kind of web. Right? So, the post-human world. Now, why it was important for us into the... Because this cyborg, by the way, she called it cyborg. You know, cyber organ. So, we are no longer human organs now. We are kind of embellished. Right? With the cyber organ. So she called it cyborg. We all are cyborgs almost. This is the post-pandemic cyborg look like. The doctors almost for two years, a lot of them are my close friends. They said, we did not take out our PPE kits sometime for three months, six months. You saw people's masks, there were the marks on the face. Right? So these are the new cyborgs. Or the same thing happened with the patient also. The patients were on ventilator. And what is a ventilator? Mostly all of your organs are dead and machine is supporting you. So machines are capable to give you life for a couple of hours. By that time your body will heal. Right? That means if there are, that means if there is no machine help for you, if you are not a cyborg, if you are not a machine plus human being, we, are, we cannot think about our existence today. Right now, look at that, how many mechanical things we are surrounded by. How many things I'm using right now, right? So these are the things. So I'll just quickly take you through this. Uh, I, I can leave my PPTs with uh, all of, you know. So all of you can go through this. It's not possible that I can cover up everything, right? So yeah, there is a um, Nancy, you know, I talked to you about Jacques Nook Nancy, who gave a very beautiful philosophical concept. Look at his first line. When you are in isolation and you are alone, he said, being in isolation is in fact a way of being with. We all cursed isolation. We were excited in the beginning. You know, ek mahine, pandra din maja hai, aray, college nahi jana, kuch nahi karna, maja a gaya. After 15, 20 days, we realized, oh my God, I cannot, you know, close the doors and be inside. What the hell is this? But remember, that's what we exactly do in Vipassana. The word, the earth gave you that time. And the philosopher said, being in isolation is actually being with you. I myself, first time I realized, you know, when I was studying, immediately I got a job, always running, running, running classes. First time I got a time. And I sat down and I talked to myself, what I want to talk about, what I want to read. First time I read all the novels which I wanted to read when I was a student. So it, it gave us some time. We talked to ourselves. It, You know, there is always an opportunity, to, you know, they say that there is a silver lightning behind every dark cloud. So this was the silver lightning if you wanted to see it that way, right? So I'll leave it with you. Uh, now let me, how much time do I have now? Five minutes? Ten minutes. Ten minutes, okay. So I'll, I'll talk to you about a solution. These are the problems, right? This is a very long PPT. What are we talking about now? Remember guys, this present COVID also is a very positive aspect, right? We will have to look, it is in our eyes, we will have to see it positively. And what is the positive thing? First time the whole world learned to collaborate with each other. Some countries like India, and I must proudly tell you what amazing thing India did. 
इंडिया इज अ काइंड ऑफ कंट्री क्योंकि पॉपुलेशन इतनी ज्यादा है एंड इंडिया इज अ डेमोक्रेसी वी आर नॉट लाइक चाइना वेर एवरीथिंग इज हाइडिंग राइट सो इंडिया प्रोड्यूसेज द हाइएस्ट अमाउंट ऑफ डोलो डोलो याद है ना सबको जैसे ही बुखार होता था है ना हम सब लोग एक ही गोली लेते थे डोलो एंड इट बिकेम सो पॉपुलर दैट आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू कोट द मनी ऑन कैमरा यू कैन नॉट इवन इमेजिन द प्रॉफिट ऑफ डोलो ड्यूरिंग कोविड कितना पैसा कमाया होगा आप सोच भी नहीं सकते जबकि गोली सिर्फ दो या तीन रुपए की आती है ठीक है आवर कंट्री सेंटेड टू ब्राजील आवर कंट्री सेंटेड टू श्रीलंका वी सेंट वैक्सीनेशन टू डिफरेंट कंट्रीज वी शेयर आपको पता है वट हैपन वेन ऑल द कंट्रीज वर ट्राइंग टू कम अप विथ वैक्सीनेशन रशिया एंड चाइना साइबर अटैक अमेरिका टू स्टील दैट डेटा जब सीक्रेट पता चला ना कि अच्छा जैसे हम चाय कैसे बनाते हैं चाय में ये डालो ये डालो तो चाय बन रही है वो भी ये कोशिश कर रहे थे एवरीथिंग इज ऑन इंटरनेट दीज डेज टू कंट्रीज साइबर अटैक अमेरिका दे साइबर अटैक यूके दे साइबर अटैक इंडिया टू फाइंड आउट कि कैसे होता है इससे पहले कि अमेरिका अपनी वैक्सीन देता रशिया केम आउट विथ स्पुतनिक द नॉर्मल रशियन वे ऑफ वर्किंग अमेरिका चांद पे जाता उससे पहले रशिया पहुंच गया था सो वी ऑल नो हाउ थिंग्स वर्क देर आर सम कंट्रीज विच विल नेवर अलाउड द सीक्रेट्स टू गो आउट ऑफ द कंट्री बट देर आर सम ओपन नेशंस लाइक इंडिया विच कोलोबरेटेड आवर वी हैड टू वैक्सीन एट द बिगिनिंग कोविशील्ड एंड को वैक्सीन दे बोथ वर इन कोलोबरेशन विथ ईच अदर और हमारे पास ऑलरेडी इतना कमाल का इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर था बिकॉज आवर पॉपुलेशन इज सो मच वी कुड प्रोड्यूस इन वन डे विद द सीरम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ पुणे इन वन डे द अमाउंट ऑफ वैक्सीन विच कुड सफाइस फॉर ऑलमोस्ट अ फुल कंट्री लाइक ब्राजील इन अ डे विच वॉज एन अमेजिंग थिंग एंड कंट्रीज डिड नॉट हेजिटेट टू हेल्प इच अदर विच क्रिएटेड वॉट एक टर्म है इंग्लिश में जिसे बोलते हैं कन्वाइवियलिटी कन्वाइव लेट्स लिव टूगेदर I have changed this term to convive virus zones. I have used the same philosophy. You can also call it the philosophy of cosmopolitanism. You can also call it the philosophy of living together. We are living together with virus. Let's live together with each other like human beings. So what is this concept? In Spanish, conviver denotes living together or coexisting. From that, we are just one small step away from conviverus. to live together with the virus as in to live together all of us in the faces of this pestilence but also for us to live with the corona virus in a sort of conviviality you will have to learn don't try don't think that because you are human beings whatever virus is there you will clean so look at our attitude when we enter in our office or somewhere and first i take out the sanitizer and i do spray this and i am saying look at that i am the human being i will decide which pathogen which bacteria will live right and you think that you have sprayed it and they have died no they have just mutated so remember guys whenever we use something like this they will live with us so it's better that we learn how to live together not only with human beings of different nations but also with the non humans also with the animals and the viruses the pathogens am i telling you ki hame virus ko le lena chahiye sabko corona jaake bolna chahiye mujhe ho ja mujhe ho ja no that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying that if we really want to survive in the futures to come if we really want our civilization to see as an existing civilization in the whole world jyada friction mat laiye you will have to learn to live together if you will create friction then they will mutate and they'll become powerful and it'll be dangerous for us to live samajh mein aaya na so now is the time when the whole world learns the lesson of conviviality coexistence it is not only the best thing will be we forget our nationalism we forget our nationality and we start to work together on international level which we call vasudev kutumbakam puri duniya hamara ghar hai आज ये याद रखिए इफ समथिंग इज हैपनिंग इन अमेजन इन अफ्रीका यू नो दे आर नॉन एज लंग्स ऑफ द होल वर्ल्ड पूरी दुनिया को 80 परसेंट ऑक्सीजन कौन देता है अफ्रीका के जंगल देते हैं एंड दे आर डाइंग इफ देर इज अ फायर इन न्यूयॉर्क इफ देर इज अ फायर इन कैलिफोर्निया रिमेंबर गाइज इट्स गोइंग टू अफेक्ट यू ऑल्सो अगर कहीं पॉल्यूशन बढ़ रहा है एंड यू या तो नहीं बनारस में तो नहीं हो रहा है वो तो दिल्ली के लोग मर रहे हैं वो पराली जला रहे हैं वो मरेंगे नो यू आर रॉन्ग इट्स गोइंग टू अफेक्ट ऑल ऑफ अस 
all of us. If a person falls ill, Ill in Delhi because of, let's say, parali, whatever, oxygenation or deoxygenation, he is going to travel and meet you. We all travel, right? So this is going to be now an era where we learn that everybody else's problem is my problem also. Environmental, let's not eat our earth like this. Anthropocene wala picture yaad hai na? Let's try to be responsible for this, grow more trees, take responsibility, learn, do some research, try to share the research, and try to develop a kind of environment where everybody can live happily with each other with the concept of coexistence. And I always say, you want to read something, go and read the book Interbeing. It is a, uh, now the new publication has a preface by His Holiness Dalai Lama. It is written by the Vietnamese, uh, the great monk, Thich Nhat Thanh, if I did not mispronounce the name. It is his book and his concept is pretty clear, guys. I always give the example. If you are a rose and if you have the ego, that I am so flower hu by myself, don't forget that you have to make the sun is also responsible. The earth is also responsible. The gardener who came and watered you at the right time is also responsible. If you have to say that you are parents are hard work, teachers 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 Let's say thanks to all of them. Because we live in interbeing. You don't live alone. You don't exist alone. So let's develop this philosophy at a better way. And it's a beautiful of you, you know, it's one book. This book, which I always say everybody should read again and again, at least once in a year. It, it, it you know, kind of inserts in your body like a vaccine. It's a, such a powerful way. And all of you know, his style of writing is very, very easy. Right? So I think it's better I stop and if you want to ask some questions because it's a long PT and it's a big research part. I'm still working on this. So let, let's say, what is the take home essence of my talk. I'm not telling you that you not take precautions for COVID. I'm not telling you not to wear a mask. I'm not telling you not to be precautious, not to take vaccine. All these things are must. You must willingly contribute to all these things. But at the same time, let's try to be responsible for the people around us, for the non-human which includes all the animals around us and try to exist with them peacefully, happily. Then we can live together really well. The COVID taught us such a big lesson. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your profound uh, lecture. Now I request participants, uh, one or two participants to question, please, because we have not much left with time. Um, Good morning, sir. Thank you for this session. And uh, I have two questions that I want to ask. The first one was, uh, I wanted to know why did you choose this uh, title of Pandemic and Philosophy for your book? Uh, what's the background of it? Why did you choose it? And my second question is, um, philosophically, we usually say that tomorrow is unknown and um, you know, rather it bring you closer to your death. So live now, and why do we worry about tomorrow? But on the contrary, we, uh, you know, a lot of time we worry about tomorrow, tomorrow as well as about future. And then we also write, and there's so many books about future, what it gonna be. So why do we worry about tomorrow? And, you know, and also uh, remind ourselves yeah. that it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's a great question. The question is coming from the student whom I just taught existentialism. So I know from where. Anyways, the first question, why did I choose this book? Because when COVID was taking the lives of so many people, and as I told you, it personally affected me a lot. When my family suffered, when I lost a lot of my friends, I automatically was thinking about these concepts. And of course, then I entered into the books and all. And when I read them, I realized that, oh my God, it's more than what meets your eyes. There is more. So I wanted to put my contribution. And just as an information, I'm bringing the concept of Suvarikpa, the medical humanities, into my book. So because I'm located at this university, and I realized that Suvarikpa as an alternative medicine 
should be introduced to the whole world in the bigger framework of COVID and pandemic because look at this. Ayurveda and Suvarikpa mm. is the only branch of alternative medicine which is based on touch. When in COVID everybody was scared of touch and doctors had a literally a sheet, you know, kind of uh, uh, separating you from other and self. They'll say, Wah, ke baat karo. Dur se baat karo. don't come close to me. But our doctors took the responsibility to touch you. And I have a different philosophy with touch. They not only touch you guys, when they put their fingers on your nerves, right, on the veins, they feel your palpitation. They feel your pain. They become you. When they become you, they tell you what you are suffering with. It's a very, very deeper philosophy, which I'm going to talk about. So one reason was this. I wanted to. The second is, remember guys, you, you are absolutely right. We should seize the moment and not bother about tomorrow. But let's not forget, I am talking about taking responsibility about tomorrow. Somebody, like you guys are students, we tell you not to worry because we are worrying. Your vice chancellor is worrying. Your registrar has to worry. Right? So if we will not take the responsibility for tomorrow, right, there will be no proper food supply now. Like, for instance, let me tell you one data. Because of the Ukraine war, 19 to 20 countries which were getting the supply of the wheat from Ukraine now is facing a wheat crisis. We'll have to be ready before it's too late. So the aim when I say you have to look into the future is either it is government or the people in power or people who are capable to make some change, difference, environmental activists, we will have to take the responsibility for the future. Otherwise, there will be no future for our kids as we are running out of water, as things are burning, right? Today, 30% of the globe, people are having fires, surprisingly. They are having the blizzards, you know, the snow waves hitting. Recently, it happened in... Nobody is feeling in Spain where the temperature was never more than 12. Now, it is reaching to 30 and 40. 300 people died in Spain because of heat wave. In the cold countries, it's happening. That means the earth is telling us that you have eaten me a lot. You have damaged a lot. example Just imagine this, guys. earth ball So when we move on this, right now also, your weight is taken by earth. So the crust, it was already under the burden. But pehli bar puri dunya mein aisa hua ki gaadiyan ruk gayi. Puri dunya mein. Soch ke dekhe, dharti na pehli bar saans li hogi. Aray baap, aray baap. Varna dhar 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 dhar. Chois ghante puri dunya mein aisa ho raha tha. First time, the, uh, and there is a geological data for this. I was very curious. So I googled and I found a very good book which said, first time the small layer of the crust on earth healed. Because it got some time. तो मैं तो हमेशा कहता हूं पूरी दुनिया को पता है क्या करना चाहिए एक दिन के लिए पूरी दुनिया में एक दिन चूज कीजिए और लॉकडाउन मारिए कि संडे को पूरी दुनिया लॉकडाउन पे चली जाए कोई गाड़ी ना चलाए कोई धुआं नहीं निकाले एक दिन हम एसी नहीं चलाए एक दिन मोबाइल को स्विच ऑफ रखिए आपको यू विल बी सरप्राइज टू सी द आउटकम ऑफ दिस हमें क्या कोविड का वेट करना है वापस से ये सब सीखने के लिए है ना लोगों को मरना है तभी सीखना है दैट आई डोंट डू दैट Let's learn from this and utilize it. So I'm talking about these kind of responsibilities. Small, small things we all can, you know. Yeah, anyways. Yeah. Good morning, sir. So uh, I have actually uh, two questions. Uh, as, as you mentioned that uh, uh, I can't, can't relate it with your uh, philosophy and uh, uh, pandemic. I, I still can't uh, relate with that. And my second question is that uh, uh, some it may be uh, rumors or it may be uh, uh, so something that, like that. So my question is that uh, somebody uh, sa says that uh, coronavirus is a man-made <coughs> man-made virus uh, which is used by in a uh, bio war of the China. So w in, in that question, uh, what do we suggest that? Yeah. Uh, the first question. Remember, guys, we often interpret philosophy in a very limited way. We think that philosophy is a discipline 
and until i talk about plato aristotle ontology epistemology i'm not talking about philosophy it's not like that philosophy is the love of knowledge that's the basic meaning of philosophy so when i'm trying to talk about let's say this page and the existence of this page and the relation of this page i'm philosophizing it philosophy is all around us and yes now to answer your question no no sir but as a tradition as we teach in india or teach in universities i could not associate yes because i did not finish the lecture you know i did not because in one hour it's not possible that i so what i try to do is i try to tell you about the covid as a term i traced it back to its historical analysis but you know i could change the title to the history of pandemic and you'll say ha huh, sir now it is better but because it it has more than 80 slides and i think i am on 16 or i don't know which slide number right so the when we talk about philosophy deeply analysis of anything asking question and cross question having the dialectical debate of searching for the truth sir what is the meaning of even covid if i talk about half an hour i am telling you about the philosophy of the term covid so philosophy is not as a discipline where we have to be bound by certain terminology philosophy is an analysis a deep analysis of anything will be considered as a philosophy for instance in chinese and tibetan uh, canon there is a beautiful word known as tao or dao of something so there is tao of physics tao of motor biking tao of shopping tao of amazon tao dao d a o you know which came from so there is this philosophy about everything right now so far as the second question is concerned that it's a man made virus or not it'll be very scandalous if i give you my answer on this right but yeah i believe that the bioterrorism right which is taking place right now across the globe every country is capable today it happened by the way if you are wondering ki sir ye inhi dino mein hua kya nahi during world war second germany did the same thing what germany did it when people were not coming out of the trenches trenches samajhte hai na sainik khadde khod ke andar chhup gaye the ab aap bhi bahar nahi nikal rahe ho main bhi bahar nahi nikal raha hu goli kisko maru so the war went on for 3 4 years logo ko laga tha ek saptah mein khatam ho jayega world war jaise you russia ne ukraine pe attack kiya aur socha ki 7 din mein russia promise this 7 din mein ukraine ko ghutne pe le aayenge these days you don't know the power of other people you don't know what is their secret what is their power who are their friends who are their enemies we don't know to us waqt germany ne kya kiya ki trench se bahar kaise nikale they dropped the bombs which had some kind of gas and virus which burned the eyes and made people blind automatically wo bahar nikal ke aaye kyunki wo saans nahi le pa rahe the in the moment they came out they started to shoot it is a warfare aapko pata hai फ्यूचर का वॉर क्यों खतरनाक होने वाला है बिकॉज द होल वर्ल्ड इज लीडिंग टूवर्ड्स ड्रोन वॉरफेयर ये इतनी खतरनाक चीज है बिकॉज इसमें ड्रोन समझते हैं ना बेसिकली इट वाज इन्वेंटेड कि आपके यहां पे पिज्जा 30 मिनट में पहुंच जाए ड्रोन फॉर इन्वेंटेड फॉर दिस आपके यहां मेडिसिन दस मिनट में पहुंच जाए तो ड्रोन आए अब लोग उस ड्रोन में बॉम्ब बांध बांध के गिरा रहे यानी यू कैन नॉट सी योर एनिमी यानी आपके सर पे क्या उड़ रहा है आपको पता भी नहीं है राइट हाउ दिस ओसामा बिन लादेन डाइड अमेरिका वाज रेडी ड्रोन से जब वॉर हुआ तो बताया गया था कि सर ये सिर्फ यहीं नहीं गिरेगा आसपास के बहुत हजारों लोगों को मार देगा बोले मार दो जस्ट स्किल इट सो वी आर वी आर लिविंग इन टू द वर्ल्ड विच इज पिटी डेंजरस गाइज आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू स्केर यू आउट यू नो बट इट्स पिटी डेंजरस इट्स इट्स यू कैन नॉट इवन आप ये देखिए टर्की में क्या हुआ दो दिन से क्या हो रहा है द होल लैंड और अभी भी पीपल आर फीलिंग दी अर्थक्वेक दैर राइट एनी वेज नीड टू स्टॉप अदरवाइज यू नो एल कंटिन्यू लाइक दिस इल गो ऑन एंड ऑन थैंक यू सो मच सर एंड आई एम वेरी सॉरी फॉर ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स दैट दे स्टिल सो मेनी क्वेश्चन एंड क्यूरियसिटी so i would like to request you all if you are curious to know more so sir is here always so please go to him and ask more about the philosophy about the pandemic and everything and uh, and also it is very uh, pleasure to say that today sir has uh, opened up a uh, new eye for all of us because uh, the the meaning of the philosophy uh, has been taken in a very limited way till today uh, 
by the students of uh, most of the students of this institute because we only learn philosophy in uh, in the way of like uh, with the goat where the compassion love and all we have never come up with such a thought of uh, of western philosophy in a deeper way and for this i would like to thank you so much uh, for your uh, deep knowledge and we uh, i would like to request our SWI president to felicitate uh, sir with a memento as an expression of our gratitude for your time and uh, this profound lecture. <laughs> and thank you so much sir for accepting our request and for your time. And with this, uh, this session end here. Thank you so much.